Well, hi everyone. Welcome back to Photoshop User TV. We are brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals who bring you Photoshop User Magazine. And it's the 100 tips issue. It is. Certainly one of the most popular issues. A lot of great stuff in there, great contributors. So again, free with your NAP membership is 10 times a year, I believe, right now. Yep, 10 episodes. It should be 12. Why isn't it 12? 10 issues a year. All right, so this week I am joined by the Photoshop girl herself, Jessica Maldonado. How Hi, Corey. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? How was Vegas? It was fun. It was lots of fun. I got to it's sit in on your class. your first time to be amongst the people since you've been on the show. That's right. Did I was. Any, I was signing autographs. Uh, one or two. I, saw, was, I saw you had the necklace on a couple of yep. times. I was pretty shocked how many people recognized me. It was really cool. Oh, it's fun. Yeah, no. I always have a great time in Vegas, of course. Uh, and be sure to look for us next time. We're going to be in Atlanta. Uh, I've never been to Atlanta. Yeah, we never have had a Photoshop run in great. Atlanta. Very cool stuff. All right. So we're going to jump right into it. Jessica's got something pretty cool. I believe it's something for a future book, perhaps. 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 We don't know. Yeah, it's the fall. And you know what fall brings? New Ooh. iPhones. Of so, course. Uh, usually when there's a new iPhone, I create all the iPhones for our iPhone books mm -hmm. because we pretty much don't have the new ones in hand yet to nope. shoot them. And them. I'll just make a quick frame of all the different color iPhones and different angles so that we could use them on each page of the book. Mm -hmm. And we don't know yet if we're updating the book, but hopefully we will be. Good to stay ahead of things, though. Yeah. So. But what so, do you have here? Yeah, first thing I do is I actually go to Apple's media site and um, on their public relations site, they have images for download, but I don't want to use their image. I like to recreate it so that we don't have to, you know, credit them on every page or anything mm -hmm. like that. So I'll, I'll zoom into one of their images. It's shapes that you use every day. It's a rounded rectangle, a circle, another mm -hmm. rounded rectangle, another circle. Mm -hmm. You just keep recreating these shapes and they're so fast to make in Photoshop. You have different paths that you can make. You drag out your rounded rectangle and decide what size you need it to be. Zoom out, use your guides. I, I use the Apple image to get all my guides and know where to make my rectangles, where they're gonna start, where they're gonna end, how big the screen should be in relation to the body, how mm -hmm. big the button is gonna be. And I'll just kind of build this up for you I, at, once I have all my guides. Start with the outside body shape that's a vector mask that I have in my paths palette and I've added to my layer. Then the faceplate goes on. That'll be filled with the color for the faceplate and a bevel and emboss, an inner shadow. Then I'll take those two shapes and create a mask that I will paint some colors on. Just use your eyedropper, grab some sample colors from the iPhone itself then on here. And those are simple gradients, right? Yeah, yeah. just, you know, grab a brush, do, spread it out, spread mm -hmm. it out, maybe oh, grab yeah. your blur tool, which I hardly ever use, but in this case I yeah. would. Go in here and blur some of those shapes. Soften it up, yeah. Then another rounded rectangle for the screen shape, another, another rectangle for the top of the screen. If you go down here, the cool new fingerprint sensor mm -hmm. or the old button, it's just two circle shapes. Again, in the path palette. Mm -hmm. And then making a vector mask. This is just a gradient. If you click back to your Apple image, take sample a dark tone, sample a light tone, go back mm -hmm. and make a custom gradient, adding in you can add however many colors you need here to get that look. Mm -hmm. And you can keep fiddling with this all day long to get, the, to get it right. If you zoom in and look at Apple's speaker here, you think, oh, it's a speaker. Oh my gosh, how am I going to make a speaker? It has metal grid and all that. If you really zoom in and look at it, it's black and gray square. Just basically a checkerboard. Yeah. yeah, you just make a checkerboard pattern, save it as a custom pattern, put your uh, put your speaker on there. Again, a rounded rectangle with a bevel, with a stroke, with a pattern overlay of your checkerboard pattern. There's a little dot over here. I'm not even sure what it is on the phone, but I put it there. <laughs> <laughs> Then you have your eyesight camera. I'm missing some layers here. Let's put them back on. 
But just like I always talk about, is that each element is on its own layer. You yeah. Can build all these elements. Yeah, the beauty just, of this, of course. And, you you look at your reference. You say, what's that? It's a, it's a gray circle with some shading. Mm -hmm. It's a black circle. It's a blue circle. Mm -hmm. And you just keep building on top. It's really, it's, you know, kindergarten art. It's nothing really earth shattering. It's coloring inside the line. It is. <laughs> and, you know, you can build it all up. And, you know, you could go in and tweak these shadows all day to make them mm -hmm. look more metallic, but you know, really all it is is rectangle, rectangle, yeah. circle, circle. And you have an iPhone. iPhone. It's super simple. It's, and it's, that's the really cool thing about it is if you really look at a lot of art done in Photoshop, it's really just comprised of very simple shapes, especially a lot of what Felix, so Felix Nelson, our creative director, does all these fantastic things with layer styles. And he still baffles me to this day, all the stuff he does. And I can definitely see that going on here, too. Yeah, when we first started doing the iPhone books and the iPod books, like, he drew the earbuds. Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, my God, you drew those earbuds. They're yeah. crazy. But when you zoom in, it's like... Gray, darker gray, yeah. darker gray, circle, circle, circle. It's really, it's building and building those shapes and your, really breaking it down. Your eye has that function of putting it together, so you're kind of I'm, helping that. Yeah, illusion. I mean, all art breaks down like that. Circle, square, triangle, yeah. basic elemental shapes, and you just keep building and building it and putting it together. Wow. Awesome. Super simple. <laughs> Let's do this. Take a quick break. We've got a, uh, some giveaways to do. i got a quick tip, and we're going to wrap things up. So stay with us right here on Photoshop User TV. <laughs> Well, hi everyone, welcome back. I've got a quick little tip I'm gonna do in just a moment, but I want to talk about something brand new we are launching here at the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. We have Fantasy Photoshop. <laughs> if you're a fantasy football fan, you probably get the idea. Over the next few weeks, anybody who registers as a NAP member over at photoshopuser.com will be able to select a handful of different tools that have different point structures on them. Yep. So as we use these tools or not use them, it affects your point standings um, throughout the, uh, the season of Photoshop user here. So make sure you select the tools right or we might trip you up along the way. If you get 10 points, I believe it's 10 points, you get uh, 10 points is good. It'll actually extend your NAP membership by two months. So this is a great way to get a little more interactive with the show as well as extend your memberships more. So it's a lot of fun. Be sure to check that out at PhotoshopUser.com. There'll be more information over there. It's Fantasy Photoshop. Be on the lookout for it. Now, do so. you go for the sure bet tools, like the marquee tool, or do you go for you know, the a, far out tools that are rarely used that might be worth we, more of the point? We all use so many diverse. Of course, I probably use more outrageous tools than, than some of the other guys, but uh, but we're all coming from different directions, you know. And I know Pete probably uses a handful of brushes that people don't probably you know think to use. So you got to be careful. You got to use strategy. You so be sure know. to check that out. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Check it out. Uh, Great new benefit for NAP members. All right, now real quick, I have just a really quick thing, just to kind of touch on what she did with the iPhone a while ago. I actually stole the file, as you can see on my screen here. <laughs> I said, Jessica, give me that phone. Now, if you really wanted to, not that it's not cool enough already, but if you have the layer here, just go to 3D and go to new 3D extrusion from selected layer, and voila, we can take her phone and make it 3D. Right now, right now it looks like it's from 1987. Yeah. But let's fix that really fast and just bring that down, make it nice and thin. I'm sure you could make it gold and shiny if we had more time. Gold and shiny, yes, if I had more time. Actually, no, let's extrusion, reflection, shine. I'm not gonna give it the, uh, the gold shine, but what I am gonna do is just add a little environment texture. Are you ready, are you ready? Here we go, there it is, shiny. And as I move the phone around, ooh. Shiny elements on the phone. Now, if I had all my phones made, you could put the back and the buttons on I there, I could, too. anyway. So if you really wanted to take it to that next dimension, literally, you certainly have those 3D features right there in Photoshop to be able to take that object. And of course, because she built it with paths, it makes it that much easier. You can get mm -hmm. much cleaner um, 3D art out of it. All right. That's my quick little 3D tip. We need to wrap things up, but we have a giveaway. We're going to give away a NAP membership, of course. Awesome. And a book. We've got a book right under here. It is... Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 5, Classroom and a Book. 
right here. So you get this and a net membership. How do you do that? You go to kelbytv.com slash contest. Go to, the, go to the um, pull down menu, actually pull up the show, you leave us a comment, your name, email. I don't have it up, it's, it's, uh, I'm not doing it fast enough. <laughs> but leave us a comment and uh, that'll put your name in the hat basically to win a net membership for a whole year and that cool book. So I want to thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Corey. Lovely phone art. Make sure to look for that in the bookstore. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. I am Corey Barker. Thanks for joining us here on Photoshop User TV. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Hi everybody, Scott Kelby here, and I want to invite you to the world's largest photography event. It's my sixth annual Worldwide Photo Walk. Yeah! All right, let's go! Now, if you're wondering what a photo walk is, it's actually a social event. It's a gathering of photographers in your area. You usually meet in like a downtown area, or a business area, zoo, a lake, anywhere and you all walk around for about two hours taking pictures. At the end of the walk, you usually meet at a local restaurant or a bar or a tavern just to hang out, make new friends, maybe share some photos and kind of look back on the whole experience. If you want to take the fun up a notch, you can enter the photo competition. Just pick your favorite photo that you took during the two hour walk, upload it to the site and the leader's going to pick a winner. That winner's going to get a digital copy of my brand new book. Once those cities from around the world have all uploaded their photos, I'm gonna pick a grand prize winner and 10 finalists who are gonna share in thousands of dollars worth of prizes. To see if there's a walk in your city, check the Worldwide Photo Walk website. And if you don't see your city listed for a photo walk, sign up right there at the Photo Walk website and maybe you can host a walk in your city. The best thing about all of this is participation is absolutely free. All you have to do is go to the Worldwide Photo Walk website, find your city, sign up and then join me on the official photo walk date. It's Saturday, October 5th, 2013. So I hope you'll join me and thousands of photo walkers from all around the world on that Saturday as we make photographic history once again. I'm Scott Kelby and I hope to see you there.